Dr. Hugh is a familiar face around campus. He is our school doctor, a practicing physician for 27 years, undaunted, supervising and organizing the night and day around the clock care of 250 middle school students. Think back over the years, your trip to the health center, your talk with, your, with the counselors, the warm welcome, the professional attention. Dr. Hugh created the systems that provide you with so much care and warmth. School visits total thousands and thousands by the end of the year. He gave us the confidence to open the school during the pandemic. For his guidance, we are grateful. Each week, he finds time to be one of your biggest fans. On the sidelines, cheering for soccer in the fall, basketball in the winter, and in the spring, baseball. You know him as Michael's dad. And this afternoon, Dr. Wayne Hugh is our baccalaureate speaker. Dr. Hugh. So I, I'm first very grateful that the weather's so nice. Because I remember uh, I was just in the health center this morning and talking to one of the students and remembering last year that it was like 90 plus degrees. And he said to me, I had a, I had a heat stroke. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be happy that I won't have to deal with that later today. And that you'll have time to listen to my 30 minutes. I'm, I'm joking. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Thank you for asking me to speak today. Welcome students, faculty, parents, and friends. As we honor the sixth grade class. Class of 2023. The past few years have been an adventure. Your growth and accomplishments have been extraordinary while in the middle of a once in a century worldwide pandemic. You've all faced change, challenge, disappointment, and success. And what a ride it's been. I started here as a school doctor four years ago, pre COVID. At the same time as the Golden Eagles. Even though I've been a physician for over 20 years, there's a lot to know whenever you step into a new place. And like all of you, I had to acclimate and adjust. Before I ever finished my first year at Eagle Brook, COVID hit. Fortunately for all of us, Mr. Chase had the vision and courage to keep Eagle Brook in person in the fall. September 2020, remember Rubna? <laughs> Every day, do your roof up. Quiet period, quarantining in dorms, close camps on dining, physical distancing, masks, isolation requirements made it lonely and fearful at times. It was a daunting year as special friendship bonds were formed. The following fall in 2021, a student said to me, I think we're getting used to it. It's not so bad. And this past 2022, <clears throat> we had some students wanting to come up with a COVID floor. And most of this year, we almost forgot about COVID. The national emergency ended on May 12th. Thank you all for getting vaccinated and following protocols to, to protect our community. We had a great year. I am honored to be with you here in the Brick Church where reverends faculty and parents have given the Eagle Brook Baccalaureate to celebrate the graduating sixth form class and give you a little party advice. I'll be the first to tell you I am not the wise old fish. But I'll tell you a little bit about my story, how I got here, and a few things I learned along the way. My parents were first generation Chinese immigrants who came from Malaysia and Indonesia. My mother said I should be an architect. My father wanted me to be a scientist. I went to medical school and planned to be a pediatrician because I love science, how the body works, and helping kids. During the fourth year of medical school, my girlfriend planned a family practice rotation with the Native Americans of the Crow Tribe in rural Montana. I was not part of this trip or had much interest. 
shortly before the rotation, a spot opened up. So I hitched on this 2,000 mile road trip to Big Sky Country, not expecting too much. In short, it was a tremendous eye opening medical, social, and cultural experience. After medical school, I entered a double residency in pediatrics and adult medicine. Because of my experience with the Crow, I went to rural Western North Carolina during my fourth year of residency and worked with the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. I worked in the office on the hospital floor and the emergency room. I'd be giving immunizations to infants one day and managing a heart attack the next while suturing, casting, and taking fish hooks out of people's faces the rest of the day. I was never so humbled and satisfied by how much a person could know, do, and help a population needing medical care. After residency, I planned to be an academic doctor at a medical center. Instead, I followed my heart to be a physician who could do it all. While being mentored by Rick Docks, I returned to Cherokee with the same student who introduced me to Pro Nation the medical school. She has since become my wife and is my most wonderful. After working four incredible years in Cherokee and having two children, we moved back to Northeast to be close to her families. I became medical director of a center that cared for the poor and the farm workers in Western Massachusetts. I did this for another four years. I would come home late every night, and one night my two daughters were in tears because they said they never saw me. So despite my love for the work, when Michael was born, I changed the position to be a pediatric and adult <coughs> hospital specialist, a hospital. And I found a new passion and loved it. We took care of newborns, children, and adults who were sick enough to be admitted to the hospital. Then, out of the blue, a colleague and former Deerfield Academy school doctor asked me to check out Eagle Road as they needed a physician. And the rest is history. Life twists and turns quickly and suddenly. Although you may have plans, my first tip is don't worry if you've been diverted off your original course. When I was in medical school, I never imagined I'd be working with a Cherokee in rural North Carolina. Or be a hospital specialist in Northampton. Or be the school doctor in Eagle Brook. But it's been a beautiful journey. It all started with an unplanned road trip in Montana. It's hard to see what will make us happy a few years from now because we and our lives change unpredictably. So when we look ahead, plan, but also plan to recalibrate often. Be open to new ideas and opportunities, experiment, and take it as it goes. In times of change, I'm reminded of this parable. A farmer and his son had a beloved horse who helped the family earn a living. One day, the horse ran away, and the farmers exclaimed, the horse ran away, what terrible luck. The farmer replied, maybe so, or maybe not. A few days later, the horse returned home, meeting a few other wild horses back to the farm as well. The neighbor shouted, your horse has returned, and brought several horses home with him. What great luck, the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. Later that week, the farmer's son tried to ride on the horses, and she threw to the ground, breaking his leg. The neighbor cried, her son has broke his leg. What terrible luck, the farmer replied, maybe so, and maybe not. A few weeks later, soldiers from the National Army marked marched through town, recruiting all the boys to the army. He did not take the farmer's son. He had broken his leg. The neighbor shot him. The boy is spared. What tremendous luck. To which the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. At the health center, I see you when there's a problem. More terrible luck. 
So I often see a bit of angst, a bone fracture or a muscle strain that results in missed games causes anguish. Getting an unexpected grade on a test or having conflict with a roommate can cause similar distress. May it be a fracture or poor grade, argument or COVID, an ego brother, you've experienced change in adversity. And as, as some of your assemblies are reflecting, overcoming difficult times tested you and you're transforming. Whether it be adjusting to life at Eagle Brook from another country, missing home or a loved one, trying to get more playing time at varsity hockey, becoming the running back on, on football team, recovering from a broken clavicle or ankle, reading sheet music, being verbally challenged, including in golf, lacrosse, swimming, cello, or art. When you think, what terrible luck? My second tip is, remember the farmer. Don't get too upset at the current moment. Accept, learn, and grow. Better days are likely ahead, and time will tell the whole story. In the words of Epictetus, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to what happens. My final tip is, find things you love, really love. Many students go into medicine thinking they'd like to work with children and would like pediatrics. In medical school, you find out that pediatrics is usually not the smiling, happy children. Pediatrics usually involves sick, grumpy children. <laughs> Of course not even. Not only that, you're dealing mainly with parents. If you love pediatrics, you love working with the kids so much, you deal with their sneezing in your face, crying and anxious parents. And you do love talking to the parents and letting them know that their children are just fine. To find that crazy love, you must work at it. You need to try a lot of stuff. Eagle Pro gave you opportunities to try new things, and you'll need to continue to take advantage of this through secondary school. In fact, at this stage, you should aim to find a few of Being curious is a habit. Liking something is a choice. Whether you're good at it will factor in, but it's a separate issue. Don't let it be discouraged you from liking or pursuing a subject. Engage in all your classes in secondary school and find something interesting in all. When you find those loves, you'll have to tolerate a bit of pain and disappointment. Most problems I see in my career begin as physical. But the most troublesome consequences are often mental. Use what your, you and your classmates have learned in Eagle Brook. Be persistent and fight through those doubts and worries. Your struggles, defeats, and most trying moments have led to hard work and time forged in the crucible where you change, be stronger, and maybe found some purpose. True passions are always tested by fire. Do not shy away from them. Class of 2023, Eagle Brook has done you well and you have done Eagle Brook proud. Be grateful for those who guided you as you did not journey alone. Thank your parents and your family for their love and this opportunity. Appreciate your teachers and faculty for setting high standards, pushing you hard and caring for you. That includes your nice teachers, your cool teachers, your great teachers, and the tough teachers you will never forget. Be grateful for the joy they inspired and the lessons they taught. They've all made you better and stronger in class, on stage, and in life. Appreciate your classmates through the years. You've all shaped each other's lives. 
The impact of your associations in your chemistry has been meaningful, influential, and critical in your development. Whether in the dorm, on the soccer field, or in the English class. I personally thank the sixth form class as Michael was made better by your character, friendship, and work ethic. I cannot name every one of you, but a quick shout out to a few of those that I appreciate and supported me. Will, Harry, Aiden, Emmett, Tristan, Picho, Pete. The special nods to Cooper, Tatsuya, Jamie Smith, and Jaden Lynch and their families. To all of you, each has a band of brothers to be grateful for during these years together. We at Eagle Brook will miss you, will miss all your personalities and talents, because they are unique and they can never be replaced. I will miss the honesty and humor. Owen Wright comes into the health center and requests a shade advisor for football. And I ask, why do you need it? Ex expecting a medical read. With a big grin, he says, because it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I will miss Aiden Tatro being the defensive line of varsity soccer and taking a red card for protecting our game. I will miss Ollie's acrobatic finishes at the booth. <coughs> and Yuri's beautiful skin. I will miss your vulnerability, strength, and voice in your assemblies. But what I'll miss most is your enthusiasm, your vigor, and your raw joy when you celebrate a friend's success, a great performance, or a team victory. The road of life can be unpredictable and winding, and will no doubt have a few potholes, and send you off to some awful future path. But in times of doubt, remember you are Eagle Brook strong and summon the strength and health of your fellow Brookies, and enjoy the ride. Honestly, you made it through these last few years, you can make it through it. With adversity, what terrible luck. Remember the farmer. Maybe so, maybe not. In times of success, celebrate and be humble. Finally, don't work too hard. Have fun. Be kind. Find a few things you love in your next chapter. Savor this last week, and we can't wait to see what you all do next. We will miss you guys. Thank you.